ESP boards with displays. Very useful for many projects. They save us some soldering and they are very compact. Which one is best for your project? And which one disappoints? At the end of this video you should be able to do better buying decisions. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. In video number 159 we did a comparison between standard ESP32 boards and in video number 193 you find an overview of ESP32 boards with battery management, but no displays. Today we will add the boards with displays. I added all 7 new ESP boards. Six of them have an OLED display, some even with color, and one has an e-paper or e-ink display. To save you time and for your convenience, I assembled a list of all boards with features, measured values, and links to the supplier information if I found it. These are the today's contenders. The TTGO with a 2.9 inch e-paper display. The Wemos with a small OLED display but no battery management. The TTGO TS version 1.2. The TTGO T4. The TTGO Pro version 2 without logo. Maybe it's even not a TTGO. The Wi Fi Kit 32. And the TTGO LoRa version 2. If you remember, version 1 of this board was a total disappointment. What are the criteria I checked? and why I think they are relevant. I looked at what kind of display is mounted on the board. Does the board use a shielded ESP32 module or just a chip soldered on the PCB? How many pins are broken out to pin headers? Does the board come with an antenna connector for an external Wi-Fi antenna? Is the board breadboard friendly? How readable is the pin labeling? Does the board have an additional flash button? If a battery connector is available, is also a switch available to cut off the battery? Which size of battery connector do you need? Does the board crash if you disconnect USB? What type of voltage regulator and LiPo management chips are used? How much current does the board consume? All selected boards have a USB to serial converter on board. Some have additional features like an SD card slot or PSRAM. One even has an accelerator chip built in. So let's start with the first topic. Which displays are used? I found different three principles. The simple, small and monochrome SSD 1306 OLED displays, well known to most of us. They are either white or blue on black. Color OLED displays, which are larger and can display colors. They have a similar size than the boards. One board has an e-paper screen, which is much bigger than the board itself. Keep in mind, e-paper displays are very thin and fragile. This display is black on white. Its content stays even if power is switched off. Next, which chips are used? We ROM 32 modules. Here all components, including the antenna, are placed on a module. This module is shielded and FCC certified. ESP chips soldered on the PCB. This concept probably reduces the manufacturing cost. Especially TTGO seems to like this concept. To program all boards, I used the ESP32 dev module board definitions. For my tests, I used two different sketches. One to check the display and one to measure the current. The sketches for the displays are different for all boards because they need various libraries or use different pins for the displays. For your convenience, I posted these sketches to GitHub. Like that, you have a head start. It took me some time to find the right sketches and pins. For the e-paper display, however, I only found a sketch for the ESP IDF, not for the Arduino IDE. You get this board also with smaller screens and there you find sketches for the Arduino. What about the documentation in general? As you see, the majority of the boards are from TTGO. They have proper documentation for their boards on GitHub. For the other boards, you have to search a little. I posted a link if I found something useful, as well as the links to the shops. 
As always, if you know more, please inform me and I will update the info. The second sketch is simple. Based on the deep sleep example, I added a delay in the beginning to measure the idle current. Then the board goes into deep sleep and I took my measurement. It does not make a lot of sense to deep sleep boards with OLED displays, because during deep sleep the display has to be switched off or the current consumption would be high. This is why I did not measure this value. The board with the e-paper display, however, is made for deep sleep. You change the screen and go for deep sleep. The display keeps its content. I bought this board for a device which will be mounted in the entry of our home. It should display things like how to dress for the weather situation outside during the day and when the next bus or train is leaving. Maybe I will even include the schedule of our waste service I used for the Etiquette Machini. Unfortunately, the board, also after removing the power LED, which was always on, still used around 10 mA from the battery. Maybe it has to do with all these power converters. I do not know. But it is a total disappointment. A board with an e-paper display should have a very low deep sleep current. Does any one of you own such a board? Also with a different size of the display? Can you please check its current consumption during deep sleep and come back to me? So currently, this board is an expensive failure. No Arduino driver for the display and a high deep sleep current. I have to postpone my project or search for an independent e-paper display and combine it with a barebone ESP. Next you find the number of pins broken out to pin headers. This is important if you need many connectors for your project. The TTGO boards with the big displays have only a few pins broken out. Please check upfront if you have enough available. Two boards come with U.FL or IPX antenna connectors for an external Wi-Fi antenna. This can save your day if you need more reach for your project or if you want to place your ESP in a metal box. The one with the LoRa module, of course, has an IPX connector for the LoRa antenna. By the way, you shortly will find a full review of this module on this channel. Next you find the information if the board is breadboard friendly. I call it breadboard friendly if it leaves one row of pins on both sides to connect your wires. I also checked if and how the pins are labeled. If the labels are on the bottom side, you cannot read them if your board is on your breadboard. Next we check if a battery switch is available. Such a switch can be convenient because you do not need to insert your own or disconnect the battery after work. With these small connectors, this is anyway not easy. And I do not know how often you can do that without breaking the connectors loose. All boards but one use 1.25 mm JST GH connectors. Usually you get connectors with the boards. Unfortunately, there is no standard which pin is ground and which is plus. So always measure twice before you connect your battery if you like your board. If you want to know how to check polarity, you can watch video number 193. If you need more than these connectors, you have two possibilities. You buy empty shells and a good crimper, or you purchase prefabricated wires. Because crimping these small connectors is a pain in the ass, I bought a few ready-made cables in the usual sizes. They do not cost a fortune. Like that, you only have to change the colors using a pair of tweezers if your board has a different layout. The next criteria you do not find in the data sheets. Does the board reset if you disconnect USB power as I do here? This is very important if you want to run your board on batteries and charge them occasionally with the solar panel. Then it is not very good if your board always crashes if the sun comes out. As information, I provide the type of voltage regulator and LiPo management chips where I know them. In this context, I want to thank the viewers who provided missing information after the last video. As the last step, I measured the current consumption by the entire board without anything connected to it and without Wi-Fi. As expected, bigger displays need more power. The battery values can differ from the USB values 
and usually are more important as they directly influence the autonomy of your project. A word to PSRAM or SPI RAM. This is an external random access memory chip of up to 4 MB. So far, this memory cannot be used by standard Arduino IDE and is probably also not needed for regular projects. If you use MicroPython, this RAM seems to be very valuable. Python, other than C++, used in the Arduino IDE, does not use a compiler on your PC. Instead, the source code and some sort of bytecode is stored on the ESP board itself. And because you can change code during development, it is not stored in flash memory but in RAM. This is why you need more of it. And with the right version of MicroPython, you can use PS RAM. We will look at these things when we look at MicroPython. By the way, I updated now the values for board number 2. After I killed mine in the last video, I got a new one, which works fine. Summarized. This is the third overview on ESP32 boards and covers boards with displays. We found boards with small monochrome and large color displays and even one with a large e-ink display. Each board needs a different display library or at least different pin definitions. All but one board also have battery management for LiPo batteries on board. It does not make sense to use deep sleep with OLED displays. If you need deep sleep, e-paper displays should be the right choice. Unfortunately, the only board with e-paper display disappointed with a lack of Arduino driver support and a high deep sleep current. The prices of these boards are at least double the amount of a standard development board. But they are quite convenient and they also fit in little boxes. Most of the boards do not crash if you disconnect power from USB. So you can use them in mixed operations with battery and mains or solar power. Now it's up to you. Look at the Google spreadsheet and apply your filters. I'm sure you will find the board which suits your project best. I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon for supporting the channel. Without you, it would be difficult for me to make such quite expensive comparisons. Bye.